What a marvelous, marvelous three days we've had together. As I thought about us coming together like we are at this particular time, there's a question I want us to consider. And what I'm going to use to answer this question, we already know it. I think it's a good question to ask, why do we come to the Lord's table? Why are we doing it? This is going to sound silly, but for some people it might simply, nobody here, but for some people it might be, well, this is just what we've always done. For some people it might be, well, I like the taste of the bread and I like the taste of the Welch's grape juice. Those are wrong reasons. Brother Boyce, Monday morning, brought out the fact, just real quickly in his message, he referred to it there in 1 Corinthians 11, if we don't partake in the right manner of the Lord's Supper, some are sick, and some even die. I don't like thinking about that at all. (laughs) We want to be serious, just as we are, we're a serious group here, of coming to the Lord's table. And as I think about our theme this week, uh, here's the short answer to this question. Christ Jesus, the slain lamb of God, he is the reason we come to this table. He's the one who has sanctified us. He's the one who has provided us the way to live forevermore. And what a wonderful, wonderful way to consider the Lord's table. But here's my long answer. It's got ten parts, and I'll try to do this quickly. We come to this table because we love God. We love Jesus. We appreciate what they have done for us. It's been mentioned this week several times, the foreordained plan of God, his eternal purpose. This is part of it, (laughs) his eternal purpose. And just in thinking about us loving God and Christ, it's always important, I like to keep this in mind, we love them because they first loved us. They shed their love abroad in our hearts. So we come to this table for that reason. Here's the second reason, which you'll see it written on the communion table right down here. We desire to remember Christ. This do in remembrance of me. I've often wondered what it must have been like for Jesus on that Thursday night. And that's another thing. It's Thursday night. It was Thursday night when Jesus got together with the apostles. I've often wondered what was in his heart, his mind, (laughs) as he's actually holding on to that loaf and he's actually partaking of that cup. And in a few hours, he's going to be hanging on that cross. He's going to be separated from the Father. He's going to cry out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? I can't even imagine what that must have been like for him. That's an expression of his love for us. He was willing to go through all of this for us. Here's a third reason. We want to thank God and Christ for sanctifying us. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, Jesus tells us to do it in giving thanks. We want to be thankful people, and I know we are, so we give thanks for this wonderful, precious gift of salvation, of sanctification. The fourth reason, we want to commune with the Lord often. Often. And we want to do it, and it's right down here, till he come. We want to do it till we see the face of Jesus. We want to remember him in that way. 
fifth reason, we're reminded that this is the new covenant in Christ's blood. I think it's Brother Given a few months or weeks ago, I can't remember, uh, he talked about how, and I'll probably use the wrong words, but this is very practical. We can hold on to that bread, partake of it, we can hold on to that cup, and we can drink it, and we can uh, just have a sense, I think, of the seriousness of this when we partake of the Lord's Supper. So it's the new covenant in Christ's blood. Sixth reason, Christ is the living bread who came from heaven, and he enlivens us for his kingdom. He's living bread. He's not just some loaf of bread that's sitting on a table, <laughs> you know, that we eat. That's been brought out, I think, earlier today or yesterday. But he himself is the living bread. We can partake of him. And that, that you know, th th this is something we participate in, in this partaking of him. The seventh reason, Christ redeemed us. And it doesn't, the scripture doesn't just say with blood, his precious blood. This blood of Christ is much more valuable, much more valuable than gold or silver or any kind of thing you want to put in there. That's how much they love us once again. And the eighth uh, reason here. We have been justified by Christ's blood and saved from God's wrath through him. Just that right there. We don't have to experience God's wrath. We've been saved and justified, and we don't have to, to experience his anger. What a precious gift that is. Here's the ninth reason. Christ has made peace between God and man through the blood of his cross. We can be at peace with God through Christ and his blood. And this isn't just like world peace, not fighting anymore. <laughs> this is peace with the almighty God. He's no longer angry because he sees his righteousness on us because Christ has clothed us with God's righteousness. And the tenth reason, Christ loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. We've been loved and washed. We don't have to live in sin. We don't have to participate in sin. We've been delivered from that. I want to close. This has really been a, a passage that has spoke to my heart for two, three years. Um, the church where I'm the minister, uh, a few months ago, I finished up doing a series through through the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews. And I'll tell you, it, it was just a, a wonderful blessing to just work my way through, through Hebrews. Chapter 2, verses 10 through 13, I love this passage. For it was fitting for him... For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not, and note this, this has been mentioned earlier this week, he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. Verse 12, saying, Jesus saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And I love, this is probably the most tender part of this passage personally to me, and I think it is to all of us. At the end of verse 13, Jesus says, Here am I and the children whom God has given me. That's going to be said in eternity. 
because we've been set apart, purified, sanctified by the blood of Christ through his death, and he lives forevermore. He's the living one. He's going to gather us like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and he's going to present us, as it says in Colossians, to his father. We're going to be his spotless, we're already his spotless bride without blemish, but the fullness of that will be in eternity. So as we partake of the Lord's Supper, I just want us to uh, think upon those things as we partake. If the young men uh, would come that are going to help serve the, the Lord's Supper at this time, I think Silas and some of the, Brother Silas and some of the others are coming up. And then uh, at this time, let us uh, go ahead and have a prayer for the Lord's Supper. Oh, Father, you have given us so much. You have loved us in such a marvelous and eternal way. You have given us the privilege to be in your kingdom. We don't deserve it. But through Christ, we have this opportunity to participate, to put our faith in your Son and in you and be in your kingdom and to do marvelous, marvelous works in your kingdom because your Son and your Holy Spirit live within us. So as we partake of the loaf and we partake of the cup, uh, we thank you that it is the blood of Christ, his body that was sacrificed, that satisfied what you required. Once for all, as the scriptures, uh, your scriptures tell us, we have been sanctified. It took one gift Christ himself, and we thank you for that. Amen.